Welcome everyone. Tonight we bring you Ramblecast episode 1, but what is Ramblecast, I hear you ask? Ramblecast is a collection of tangents and additional material we recorded at some point in the last year or so that's never been released before. Sometimes this stems from the bizarre conversations that just naturally occur while waiting for someone turning up. Or, sometimes in the case of Barry, a tangent that just got significantly away from us and just started a life on its own. Hopefully, you enjoy these collection of random conversations we've had in this true insanity that is Ramblecast. Well, I mean, today it's actually Waffle Day in Sweden. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds tasty. As a diabetic, I find that very exclusionary and offensive. <laughs> Of course you do. Well, that... Mm. So, mic check, beginning with Belray. If you Hello. could choose one thing for your armpit to dispense, what would it be and why? If you don't do this, you should... Yeah, we usually do stuff. this. This is just like ramble, isn't it? Yep. Like, yes, that's ramble. the character dictionary, I think. Also, I forgot the question. If you could choose one thing for your armpit to dispense, what would it be and why? I mean, antiperspirant seems like... A pretty convenient one, like it'll be right where you need it, and then you wouldn't have to like bother with any perspirant, especially if it was like you know, like the stick ones because those are just weird. I was never comfortable with the idea of roll on deodorant, so you want your arm, especially to aerosol deodorant. So when you put your arm up, it no, 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 I don't mind what kind, but what I'm saying is, especially when it's just a st- so you've got the ones that like the roll ons are weird, and you've got the ones that are a ball, which are weird enough. But the ones that are a stick, that's just weird. It's like... The roll-ons are the balls, right? So you, yeah, yeah, the ro- roll-ons are the ones with the wee balls. The stick ones yeah. are the ones that are actually just a stick. Yeah. In my head, exactly. they're the same thing because they're both weird for the similar reasons. Yeah, the roll one but the stick rolls also. into liquid. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, well, if you got, like, a stick one and, like, it just broke off. And then you've just got, like... <laughs> <laughs> that's because you've unscrewed too much of it. No, yeah. I've never used one because it's too. It just strikes me as weird I and uncomfortable. I had someone who used to use stick ones, and she got angry at them every single day she used it, and then she went back. Why? Yeah. And it must be so much harder. I'm assuming the person you dated was like shaved the armpits. I feel like that's a fair assumption because most women tend to. Depends how she was feeling at the time. I didn't really. Care fair about enough. That. Fair enough. But like when you have, I'm the only one that really doesn't care. <laughs> I don't care if I shave or not. I'm just happy. I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> Some of the sticks are maybe a little annoying. The dry ones, there are those that are really, really dry. On uh, the subject. Can't with those, but otherwise. So on the it subject. Seems like such an unnecessary thing to get worked up about. <laughs> the fuck out. Bell ring. What it does? <laughs> Bell on Bell ring. Like, what are you gonna say? This is just as an aside because it's something that's bothered me for like literally years. But like, is it weird that one armpit has really fine hair, but the other one has really coarse hair? Like, as a personal experience? Or yes. No, this is referring to me specifically. Like, that's weird, right? Like, why are the two different textures? Probably, I've never probably examined not. people's underarm hair to the point that no. I could realize if that's true or not. No, but like, it's a stark contrast. Like, on one arm, like on my left arm, it's fairly fine hair. But on the right arm, it's very, like, sort of coarse. Well, are you right-handed? Yes. Oh, there you have it. I feel to see the causality. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to go get it checked out, Barry. I mean, I'm sure it's, like, a non-issue. I've lived with it. one armpit and not the other. No, like, like I said, I'm sure it's a non-issue. I've lived with it since, like, puberty. But, like, it's just weird, right? It's, like, it's unusual. It's just... Like, well, what, a lot, why? A lot why? of people have different stuff on different sides that are not symmetrical. It's nothing weird. Yeah, it's but it's not like are. it's not like one nipple is a bit lower than the other. That's normal. But I feel like hair should be consistent. But why you know? don't you have the same hair on your head as under your arms then? If it's supposed to be consistent. That's to do because with it's not in any way consistent. So just accept it. Exactly. I mean, I have seen someone who had, who had, like, more hair under one arm than the other when she just let it grow, but I thought that was just assuming it was just, that's how it is. Welcome back, Amy. 
Look, I'm, I'm a freak, and I'm looking for the, the validation, that's all. <laughs> I mean, do you insist on them having to shave their armpits, Barry? No, no. But, like, I'm not talking about I'm talking about, like, my weird ones. <laughs> so, did we actually get an answer as to what you would have your armpits to spend? Anti-perspirant, because then I would never, ever have to use, like, a stick or a roll-on. Have you had to yeah. use a stick or roll-on recently? Not in the 26 years of my life, no. You know if but he then I would the never have to. There's... You know, if you use deodorant rather than antiperspirant, it would probably irritate less. I think it's not an irritation thing. It's just a bell. It's just. <laughs> it's just weird that it's like it's, it's just weird that you're rubbing like a stick on there. Right. It looks and has a similar texture to lard, and you wouldn't rub lard on your. I'm, I'm really, I'm like really like lard. I'm this... really confused why you're so upset about something that's just so. It's easily like, avoidable. It's like I'm dry more concerned la- right. about what the hell were these other people using? That it Here's the like point. Have you dated someone who didn't use lard under their arms? No. Are you but, sure? Right. Maybe it I'm was going too to put much. Straight... I don't know. Right, I'm gonna isn't flesh vegan and all that nonsense. Is but anyway, what? I'm gonna sum this up God. very succinctly. Yes. I would have my armpits dispense either antiperspirant or deodorant. Because until that point, there is a non-zero chance that at one point in my life I might have to use a stick deodorant. But if I had that ability, then it would be a zero percent chance that I'd ever have to use a stick. Would you rather use lard instead? No, because that would defeat the entire purpose. It would be antithetical to the aim. Because then I'd smell of lard. (laughs) (laughs) Mmm. Mmm, lard. Okay. This is why I was trying to keep that one for the Ramblecast episode, because I'm sure Barry could keep going if we wanted him to. But, Dragon? What the fuck was the question meant to be again? If Don't you we know we one ask these questions your... in the actual intro rather than the mic check? Yeah, we do. Yeah, but I've got an actual question. This is literally just a mic check question just to... Oh, okay, fair <laughs> enough. This was literally just... I thought it would be like a weird... People would give one word answers and we go, right, okay, rather than Barry having a eight-minute ramble... <laughs> If you really thought that, you wouldn't have been said it's a Ramblecast. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, okay. This is uh, so AJ what, as well, so... If you could choose, my result, if my you could choose answer one thing for your armpits to dispense, what would it be and why? Flowers. <laughs> your armpits yes. would dispense flowers? Yep. Here's the thing, you would need really big paws to dispense flowers. I didn't say it had to be logical or natural. But like, where do they come out of? The armpits, of course. <laughs> Whereabouts? Probably the same from place the hair when follicles. You, when you lift so your arm and it squishes people in the face, it's the same place, Barry. Yeah, but like, liquids can be through pores, which are like normal and hint. Like, if you had like flower sized pores, that would be like weird and you could stick like small objects in there. Well, I think you're like limiting the scope of the answer for the question. <laughs> Yes, I mean, in itself, it's so <laughs> ridiculous, if my, so... If my armpits magically conjure up flowers, I don't think they need to worry about how to expel the flowers. Just cut them with a scythe. Well, that's just poor, like, planning, quite frankly, there. No, that would... <laughs> you would just have an open razor. That's fine. Yep. Or a pair of hedge trimmers. <laughs> just take a fly just motor, you'd be fine. Go bit of... <laughs> Right, okay. Amy? Oh, uh, God knows what I'd have come out of my armpits. Jesus. Jesus? Don't want to spend some <laughs> Oh no, my mother would have a fit. <laughs> <laughs> like all would it be Jesus in a sandwich or anything like that? It's like, yeah, I've got Jesus in my armpit. Look at the face of Jesus <laughs> under your armpit. <laughs> uh, I, 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 like I that guy who what you call it, that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger on Mars? Total Recall. Did he have his face in his armpit? No, but like, there was the guy who had like that like weird midget thing in his stomach. Equato. That's slightly yeah. different from having the face of Jesus in your armpit, but okay. <laughs> you got a Jesus Equato <laughs> under your arm, yeah. I mean, uh, it's similar. I'm gonna just be like, useful and say like, a stapler, so that every time I like, <laughs> just close my arms, I can staple pieces of paper. Because I find that I can never find my fucking stapler when I need it. That's brilliant. What's to stop you stapling your arms shut, though? 
you can get ones with little clips at the bottom that go over so the... So you have like a clip in both of your I just have an armband. I just put an armband on and that way it stops it. Okay. Right, okay. Okay. That's um, interesting. How would you refill the staple? <laughs> Sorry. You right, I should probably... <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, I should probably preface this. I apologise if I'm a bit rambly. I've had a toothache since yesterday, like all day yesterday when I was at work. And at about six, one of the locals suggested, hey, have some whiskey, swill it around your mouth, you know? And so, like, since six o'clock yesterday, I've just been drinking whiskey. Good. Great. Not much of it, but, like, enough to still be buzzed. <laughs> <laughs> to the pig, then. To the pig. So, whiskey. Mm, now we've had the answer of deodorant, flour, and staples. AJ. Easy. Ice on the left, Pepsi Max on the right. <laughs> Saved me a lot of trips to the supermarket. <laughs> but wouldn't you have like sweaty Pepsi Max? No, no man. It would take the place of sweat, yeah. sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay, you're on a hot day though. Why yeah, must you the cut ice. the holes? Very sticky. You'd be so sticky. Yeah. That's what the it's ice is sticky because it's no. diet stuff. Diet stuff doesn't no have sugar. Stickiness. I think that's a very bold statement to believe. Yeah. I'm not really very sticky. Diet drinks do get sticky. Can confirm. Not as sticky no, as no, sugary drinks. Not if you don't drink them. Not if you drink them quickly. You know what I mean. How would you collect it? Copiously. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Lonido? Well, yeah. My answer is going to be really, really short as well. So yeah, I probably have to ramble for a bit so you can hear my voice. Although it probably sounds like you usually do, but my armpit would definitely dispense whiskey, of course. What else? <laughs> okay. uh, yes, Lagavulin. So Lagavulin from the right, and probably just uh, Islay Mist from the left, you know? Mm. No ice, though. That's stupid with whiskey, so... Agreed. I have been converted on the drop of water, though. Drop of water is okay, because oh, that yeah. actually releases some flavor and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do that, so that's okay. Ice just numbs your tongue so you can't feel the taste. So, yeah. no. Yeah, and that's me. Okay, and finally Ash. Yeah, I think I'd have mine dispense sleeping gas. That way I'd be able to send the little one to sleep whenever I wanted him to, which would be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that is yes. an excellent answer. <laughs> Does that fall well under done. the Geneva Conventions of Chemical Warfare? Only if you tell them. <laughs> It doesn't harm them. Well, I think my armpits without deodorant probably fall under the same convention as well, so... Let me just look up the convention. <laughs> <laughs> That's great cosplay, I forget. No, I guess because it's not an asphyxiating poison or other gases. Although, how do police get away with tear gas? Very yeah, careful. <laughs> well, I mean... It would probably be useful later in life as well. You never know when you might need sleeping gas, so... Yeah, seems pretty practical. Okay. Does anyone have anything else to add to the subject before we stop this mini-recording? Except Bellary. Bellary? <laughs> I mean, I've been forbidden, so... Do you have any other things you wish to add before we stop this mini-recording? Pro probably quite a few things, but I think it's best to not. Let us set up a mic check. So, starting with AJ. To celebrate National Eat Your Vegetables Day, what was your favourite vegetable? On a technicality, potatoes. Because, you know, can't get enough of those root vegetable Chippers. things. Yeah, you know, and I can eat them in so many different forms and technically be eating vegetables. So, yeah. I've got to Google it now because there's something in the back of my brain is going, are potatoes a vegetable? I'm pretty sure. They vegetable. are vegetables, however, they're not classed as part of your five a day. Well, shit. Root vegetables, I guess you call them, yes? Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah. Yeah. Close enough. Yeah. So yeah, potatoes, because, you know, despite being vegetarian, I don't have a lot of vegetables because I'm just, you know, not good at eating food. Fair enough. Dragon? Yeah. 
Okay, favourite vegetables. In fairness, I would happily have a diet of just vegetables and nothing else. So I'm possibly not the best. It wouldn't be a short answer if I went through all of them. I what tend is your, what to is your eat favorite frozen sweet. One? Well, I don't know. That's the problem. But I tend to eat frozen sweet corn as a snack, so I'll say that. Okay. Amy? I'm struggling too, because you can't just, like, have one favourite vegetable, because on its own it's kind of, oh, this is a veggie thing. Yay. But if you have two, then it's kind of like, ah, this is a mixture of different flavours. But would garlic count as one? Yes. Because I love garlic in everything. That's actually a herb, yeah. but, I mean, I don't it's think we're that picky or choosy. Garlic I, is I, te- te- technically, it's definitely a herb, yeah, but I think in a colour ordinary <laughs> sense, in terms it's a vegetable. Of, I think we in allowed it as one of herbs and spices last week. So. Oh, yeah, we <laughs> did. Yes, herb. that was it. We allowed yes. it. I don't think it spices. is a herb in terms of phil- philology, or have we pronounced that I've forgotten? I pronounced yeah. it. I'm taking that Amy sort of had like a big anti-vampire fetish or something because it's a lot of garlic. No, I just... (laughs) I love putting it in any... It's very good to put in any dish. I love garlic. I love garlic as well. It's really awesome. But it's not a vegetable. One of the the best things is just roasted garlic. Mm, Just roast garlic and eat it. And it's the absolute tits. Yeah, or just garlic that you have put in like a liquid and let it be there for a long while with herbs and stuff. See, see now I just have Christmas in my mind with honey roasted parsnips. And have you that's tried the vegetable. smoked garlic you can buy <laughs> supermarkets sometimes? But they smoke the garlic bulb and then you use it that as normal garlic great. in all your recipes. I have good. used it in kitchens, but not in at home. But yeah, it's, it's got paprika. It's, no, it's a, a vegetable because it's a pe- no, because it's a pepper. Paprika, Paprika is also a, a vegetable. It's dried peppers. Yeah. It's dried peppers. Yeah. I think with my peppers, food. you've got the argument: are peppers actually fruit, the same as tomatoes? Yes. Who the you hell have to go thinks with that. that peppers are a fruit? They, they are. are. They're the they fruit are. in the body of the plant, yeah. and they contain the seeds. Yeah. So they are. They are the fruit of the pepper plant. They're... Yep. yep. I mean, I'm just so saying, it's studied... to what's fruit and what's not fruit and what's bad. I'm just saying, I studied, I studied so, uh, is it for fruit? years, and this is the first time hearing it. <laughs> it's just turning Sorry, into, can anyone know, name anything that's actually a vegetable? Yeah, Cabbage, exactly. kohlrabi, celeriac, asparagus. You've got a list of vegetables. Yeah. Okra. <laughs> Beetroot, <laughs> carrots. I've never actually had okra. They look okra like is shit, a fruit. Like jalapenos. <laughs> Because they contain the seeds inside, they're a seed pod. Hmm. No, I've, again, I've, I've never had it. I've never had okra, it never really appealed to me. It, like I said, it just looks like a shit. Cauliflower or broccoli? Cauliflower is trash. Cauliflower is trash uh, too. Yes, yes. Not bad. Yeah. The only value of cauliflower is as a cheese delivery mechanism. Not even okay, that. So, according to Wikipedia, peppers are biologically fruits, but they're taxed as vegetables. Mm-hmm. It's the whole Jaffa Cakes thing all over again. Yeah. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Same is true for squashes. Hmm. And tomatoes. So, sorry. Oh yeah, vegetables. Right. So I'm going to go with the workhorse of the vegetable world. The onion. Because... Which is a herb. very versatile. Onion is not a herb. Oh, onions. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's flour. <laughs> onions are a very versatile plant. And also, have you ever just had, like, roasted onions? They're very yummy. Mm. Okay. Also, balsamic onions, caramelized onions, just raw onion. The possibilities are endless. So you do As opposed to normal or red cauliflower. Onion, Red onion is usually my preferred one. Mm. Squid? French onion soup, there you go, that's another good thing you can make with onions. Also, you know those crispy onions you buy in a little pot and you put on salads? Those. Were you not eating them as a snack last week? No, that was croutons. 
Yeah. Are you sponsored but I think, by he, I think he had onion rings for two weeks ago. Like two weeks ago, he had onion rings. <laughs> I had onion rings today as well. Onion rings, there's another one. Good job. Are you actually sponsored by Onion Spurry? <laughs> it wouldn't be the weirdest thing we've been sponsored by. That's true. He's in the pocket of Big Onion. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a shallot in the corner just shakes its fist. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very tortured pun, I apologise. Okay, I'll some of your usual ones. So, Squid. Oh, after all of this, I think I'm going to say broccoli, actually. I love broccoli. Again, like the onion, very versatile. With Chinese food and a stir fry, or... I put it in curries and make soup out of it. When I'm doing my keto and trying to lose weight, I use it basically instead of potatoes for anything. I would usually have potatoes. I love them. So what did you say about? I was trying to remember the joke. Broccoli. 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 Tender stem or like regular ass broccoli? Oh no, I like tender stem. Purple sprouting. Mm. I like tender stem, but it's far too expensive. Steamed and um, shallow fried, and then with loads of like sesame seeds and some soy sauce. It's really, nice. really easy to grow broccoli. Oh like, yeah, yeah, ridiculously yeah. easy. Hmm. Let's try that sometime. I quite like broccoli with a miso vinaigrette. Mm, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. It is that'd nice. That's why I like it. You surprise me, Barry. Ah, <laughs> oh, the logic. The logic. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. As an aside, I, I did remember the joke. Oh god, what? I did remember <laughs> the joke, guys. Are you ready? So, uh, this isn't my joke. This is someone from someone at the bar from work's joke. There's two donkeys on a boat. One goes, Who's rowing? First donkey goes, Ye are. The guy says, No, ye are. Ye are. It kind of only works if you say it with like a Geordie accent. I'm still really confused. Which I don't really have. Because it sounds like ye or like the, no the noise a donkey makes. But I'm not. Yeah, I don't I have the Jordy accent, so it doesn't, doesn't get work. why that's relevant. Because it's donkeys. No, no. I get that that's the noise donkeys make. Why is that relevant? Because it's also meant to sound like you are. Oh, yeah. right. That was the bit I was missing. Yeah. I thought you just got that as a, as a given. No. God. Like I said, it only really works in the Geordie dialect. Which I admittedly don't really do. So it was fair. Not to sure begin. it would work in that either. Is it just a terrible joke? <laughs> I know, but right, you've got to understand. I do like bad jokes. Fair play. Like I think I've probably mentioned one of my favourite jokes is the two cows in a field joke. That no one apparently got whenever I said because apparently it requires too complex a knowledge of cow species. Go on, Barry. No, we got it. It just wasn't funny. No, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Remind no, us of the like, uh, so that... No, because I feel embarrassed now. Go on, Barry. Remind do you, do you ever feel embarrassed, Barry? That is surprise. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes the cracks in my personality show that it is just a front to hide embarrassment, and sometimes it comes out that. So please tell us the joke then. No, it's weird now. It's just gonna get worse. Oh. Fucking two cows in a field. One says to the other, "You're cold." The other goes, "Cold and bloody freezing." Yeah, that one. I remember that one. Yeah, I remember that one, and I remember liking it as well because like, I do like that joke. Because it's a really good joke. It is. It's got all the hallmarks of a good joke. I discovered yesterday. I just never no. guessed it, but my eldest son didn't know about the French egg joke. What's the French egg joke? Why do you only have one egg for breakfast in France? Why? Because one egg is enough. <laughs> <laughs> now that one is good, if you're good at French. Yes. I'm not very good at French. I'm sorry. He's just learning it now, so he's... it came up in a discussion about his French class. I'll be honest, I've never heard that one either. Admittedly, I did miss the first two years of French classes because of the way it was set up. It's a Christmas cracker level of joke. 
And it's that classic. Exactly, you think of being it right in my wheelhouse. Well, I don't. Yes, my favorite vegetable is actually cauliflower. Just the texture of it. And I mean, now I'm talking about raw cauliflower because everything that's made cooked with it tastes like shit. But just raw cauliflower to use as a tool of dipping and I just love the texture of it. Raw broccoli also works for the same reasons. And I have all my life hated broccoli because it just my intestines goes inside out when I taste cooked broccoli in any way. But for some reason, raw broccoli works as well as the raw cauliflower. And it's really, really awesome, I think. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah, raw cauliflower is pretty nice, especially in salads. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, that's crispy. And yes, the texture is just amazing. And I will admit, even though I said broccoli, it's horrible if it's overcooked. Yes, and overcooked cauliflower is death as well. Mm -hmm. You could say that about anything, to be fair. No. Yeah, if it's, or else it wouldn't be overcooked if it was still. Well, I mean, you can just have it cooked because when you cook it, it releases those. Ah, uh, I don't know. Okay. I just, just, the, just the aroma of it makes. Ah, uh, no. I agree. You don't want to like get, do much to like something like broccoli. You just want it to briefly flirt with a hot pan. But that's about it. That might work as well, but then it just have to be really, really briefly. Very, but, very um, hot pan as well. Maybe I'm going to show my age again. But do you guys remember those like key stage revision books? No. That would have like really bad like little jokes in them. No. Once I wouldn't have to say I'm going to find one. Okay. Ash. Favorite vegetable's got to be asparagus, both green and the white. Both really nice. Wrap the white stuff up in parma ham and you grill it and you serve it with goat's cheese and a salad and it's really Okay. So unless we're waiting on Bowery finding this weird architectural book that he's found. We I found the book. We soon have to have like have had a special episode with Graham and his pun book soon. Oh no. It's uh, like... No, the pun <laughs> no, no. Yes? <laughs> the book he has of puns are reasonably yep. good because they're not his. Yeah, so I mean, we're <laughs> probably going to have a, a special episode with just Graham and his pun book. Very why is so... he so... <laughs> 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 I'm going to do the thing that I'm supposed to be putting isn't working. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is it. It's it. What are you doing? Right, I got it to work. And then okay. I remember these books, it was really mad, and I was always like... I always thought it was really cool that the book, oddly enough, had like the cover of the book on it, and that cover of the book on that had the cover of the book on it, so it's kind of like... I do remember that. Dude. Relevant, I guess. So meta, so meta. Oh my god. Yeah, but computers are hard, guys. <laughs> you did something yes. great that effect with your pictures on it. I don't know, I didn't even mean to. I couldn't find any of like the little jokes that they had in like the corners though. Because then they weren't oh. good or you couldn't find any? Oh no, they were like... They were terrible jokes. But yeah. I couldn't find any sort like pictures of them on the internet. Why do you just read them? These are sort of like the dummies books. Mm-hmm, for dummies. And they all have really, really bad jokes about the subject they're actually containing. No, they were like proper official revision books and study guides for like key stages one through three, which is like young young kids in school. Yeah, Actually, well, you said they had how jokes. How key stage though, three? Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought you meant the, like key with stage these, like, three is dark oh, secondary no. school before Just you take your GCSE. Jokes. So like so up yes, to like fifteen. So the eleven to fourteen. Yeah. Right. Okay. As my eldest is currently sitting in the middle of that lot. Well, just started that lot. <laughs> Had a year of it, because it's summer now, isn't it? Does he yeah. have any of these books? No. Oh. Do they still Safe make answer. <laughs> right, well, I'll reset this for going again then. No berries finished telling us about math books. They have them for all core subjects. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
to celebrate National Bison Day, where is your favourite place to take a bison? Starting with Oneida. Yes. My favourite place to take a bison would probably be in Belris Bar. I have heard that they have some nice paintings there and everyone knows that bisons love nice paintings, especially of sharks. So I would definitely take it there. Okay. Next we have Dragon. Favourite place to take a bison? Yes. Onto a reserve that will automatically kill poachers. Why? Ooh. Because they were hunted nearly to extinction, that's why. True. Okay. Amy? Hmm. I'd probably like just to wander around its natural habitat with it and just be like, so this is your lake. You drink from this, I take it. Have a bath. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. You know, when, like, go swimming and things. And, oh my God. Would you swim with really? the bison, baby? <laughs> well, swim with dolphins, don't you? So. Yep, yeah, everyone's done. That stands to reason you could swim with bison. Yeah, why not? Do we know if the bison actually swim? I first imagine they'd be able to cross lakes and things when they're migrating round. I think they go round lakes. Yeah. Yeah, they might cross rivers. Yeah. I've never seen. Well, I mean, they can walk, but I mean, they usually just drink from lakes, I think. I've never seen bison swim, but... I mean, I know cows in Scotland can swim in the sea because there's a couple of places in the West Coast that they swim out to islands to pasture, so it's not possible. Mm-hmm. Not that no, it's, pro- it's, it's probably probable, but I don't know. I have never seen a bison swim. So. Well, according to Google, they're quite strong swimmers and can cross rivers over a kilometre wide. Woohoo! That's nice. Very impressive. So, would you swim a yeah. kilometre race against a bison? Maybe not a kilometre race, because I'm way fit. Because <laughs> you're what? And I can't really swim. I'm way unfit. Like, physically, I'm just like, uh, no. So, how about if we got an unfit bison? I'd probably drown. I'd <laughs> probably drown. <laughs> we raced you against an equally unfit bison. <laughs> We'd both drown. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Squid? I think I'm going to go dark being a massive meat eater that I'd probably take my bison to an abattoir so I could have nice big steaks out of it. Pretty fucked up. You <laughs> heart bastard. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. Mm. Not as messed up as if you'd said, like, I'd take it to an abattoir to watch its friends be murdered. But, like... <laughs> <laughs> There's always one darker thought. <laughs> I think you'd probably be arrested for that as well. What? They're protected species, I thought. Yeah, I think no, they I've are. eaten bison. That doesn't mean they're not a protected species, though. <laughs> well, I think you eat bison. Bell is eagle. <laughs> <laughs> what has what? I think it's is it not just only Native American that are their uh, ranges are on the kind of land? I think it's only they can hunt them. I'm I think so. I mean, it, I mean, it, it is okay because I'm probably not going to do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I like the poor there, hypothetical bison. There are actually Man, hunters with bison. So he bison. probably wouldn't so, do it. Uh, I'll, just, I'll, I'll stick to the water buffalo that are actually farmed quite close to where I live. All right. That's cool. I mean, there's like they're a they're, yeah. place that sells. They're not like sort of perfectly fine to kill and to hunt so fair enough just don't hunt them in a farm because that's not very fair just hunt them at home yeah <laughs> in front of the sofa yep if you find a bison in your home you're probably allowed to take it to an abattoir probably yeah <laughs> AJ probably go to Thorpe Park or something like that you know just have a fun day out <laughs> <laughs> Where's the entry, entry I don't, for a bison? I don't know if it would fit on stealth, but I feel like I'm going to have a tough enough time getting in those cramped seats as it is, so I might as well have a buddy who also can't fit on it. So, mm. yeah, you know. I just have this image of bison on a roller right now. Yep. 
Either that or look, yeah. Look, he's so confused. <laughs> and then ending up at the abattoir after the inevitable accident. <laughs> oh, you see, you put on the He just doesn't get off like the roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. I probably wouldn't take him to an abattoir. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> You'd leave the Thorpe sorry. staff to clean it up. <laughs> Next time I see you walking a bison, I will no doubt be following <laughs> you around with a dustpan and brush to sweep up some bits for tea. <laughs> just, I'm not it's sure just falling want, apart. Just... <laughs> I'm not sure you want to eat the bits that just sort of fall off. Of <laughs> oh, you dropped the rump steak. I came, hmm. I came out worse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if it is meat that falls out, it's probably not very good meat. <laughs> oh, nope. And finally, Barry. So, I kind of have to already came up with a good answer for the orange thing, so I'm going to front load with that. Um, I would paint lemons orange so that people would get really confused when they ate. You must! <laughs> yeah, but if True. you painted or- so lemons weird. orange, the, the different shapes so people would still realise. Ah, uh, some would probably not do that. Yeah. If you painted limes orange, more people probably wouldn't notice. I mean, I guess, but the point is I would paint a fruit that texturally and shape-wise looks like an orange, but in terms of its colour, doesn't. Well, and I therefore, by adjusting the colour, it would fool people into thinking it wasn't orange, I think you're although you would hope that the paint would have dried by then. You're underestimating the stupidity of the general public uh, as yeah, well. exactly. I but don't I know, did paint, you see the uh, Bake Off final? No. 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 Nope. I've the, never watched an episode of Bake the, <laughs> the showstopper was making food look like other food and they had fast in it. They had what? Very well done. They had to make food look like other food. It was weird. And one of them made like this entire like cheese board out of cake. And they all looked like different types of cheeses. And they tricked a few people with it afterwards, apparently. Said, oh, this is cheese. No, it's actually cake. Right, but I think I would actually be a little bit disappointed if I was reaching for a piece of cheese. (laughs) (laughs) The relationship with cheese is slightly different (laughs) to most people's little bit already. (laughs) If you were reaching for cheese and you come up with, what would be the worst cup of cake you could get from that little berry? Honestly, probably cheesecake. Because I'm not that big a fan of cheesecake. And also, like, it'd be, like, even more of a kick in the teeth. I think fruitcake would be worse, especially fruitcake covered in marzipan. Yeah. I like marzipan. Oh, I'm with you on that. Cake. But, <laughs> what yeah, do you fruitcake that's... covered in marzipan when you think it's going to be cheese, that's that's bad for me. Really badly made, super dry fruitcake as oh, well. Oh, God. Uh... What, what does the cow say when his kid goes away for the... D- Bye, son. Ah, uh, haha. Good one. So, on that oh, note, honey. Barry, I've where been would you take on a person? For, like, the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Where would you take a bison? Honestly, in much a way that would a squid's answer. Like, a nice hot pan with, like, some garlic, maybe. You take it to a nice hot pan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'd... Put it in the pan. I mean, at least I'm killing it before I'm cooking it. I mean, even I'm bulking a little bit, cooking something alive. Yeah, like Oi, I wouldn't not put even it all cooking in it, once. scalding it. <laughs> the implication is that it would have already been filleted. No, no, it's a ah. live bison berry. It wants to have a good time, berry. That's why it's come to meet you. Oh, uh, just like everybody who's ever come to me looking for a good time, it will be severely disappointed. Well, you know, I can't sell you any better than that. <laughs> anyway, so where do you want to take this bison? To my hot pan. Fair enough, then. Alright. And uh, it'll be delicious. How big a pan would you need to cook an entire bison? Why not? Like, you would obviously need a big pan to cook an entire bison, but I'm not going to cook an entire bison. What bit would we cook, then? I would just... I don't know, like... 
A piece of bison. I'm not which, a butcher. Which piece? Bisons have many pieces, they're like jigsaws. <laughs> the flank. The flank, Ooh. you say? Hmm. Would you peel it first? <laughs> peel? <laughs> the cheek, Would you yes. peel it not first? Sure I that's am right fairly certain. I'm fairly certain that bisons don't have a peel. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Oh, careful, you don't want any of that pith left. Well, Valerie, if you actually painted it orange first, you might think it was an orange and then you could peel it. <laughs> That's true. If you painted it first, you need to, cut, you need to remove the orange peel bit, yes. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> I take it that's all we're getting out of you, Barry. Yeah, this has gotten away from me. Well, we no <laughs> notice that we didn't take the second part of our observed National Bison Day, which is compare your beard, real or fake, basically, to a bison, take a picture and post on social media using Beards for Bison. Now, I haven't looked I mean, at the to see how Beards for stupid. Bison actually got on. I don't imagine many people actually tweeted Beards for Bison, so let's see. No, oh, you've got an episode to do. Oh wow! Does anybody want to buy a Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice one half scale statue armored Batman for two thousand one hundred and twelve pounds? No. It's okay. What? It's on sale. It's on sale. It's normally two thousand five hundred ninety two pounds and sixty two pence. Well, the market price is two thousand seven hundred ninety nine. So really, it's a steal. No. That is not a steal. <laughs> well, apparently well, uh, nobody it's, bothers it's this year for National Bison Day. I'm shocked. So, Mike check to celebrate Dewey Decimal System Day. What are your favourite books? Starting with Lenida. Yes, this is me talking as usual. Glad to be in the start for once. My favorite book, or books in this case as well, will always be the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. They have always been and will always be my favorite books. I have uh, never laughed so much in my life, and I have never read a couple of books that many times as I have read those. So, yeah. My sense of humor. Cool. Dragon. I always get surprised when I'm in these mic checks. I don't need to be in them. Favorite books. Oh, God. How do I narrow that one down? Why did you ask me? <laughs> you know I can't narrow it down. Fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> well, your favorite uh, children's book, then, that you read as a kid? I will go with... Sabriel for a favourite kids bit. Is that the next one? Yeah. Yes. It's a good series. I got the newest one. Clariel. Oh. It's pretty cool. I don't have that yet. I need to get it. I have not started yet. <laughs> I've got so many. <laughs> <laughs> so many. Honestly. I buy loads of books and then never get I have like about a list of fifty to get through. <laughs> I've not oh, bought any books this year. I've been very good. I've not bought a book this year. <laughs> yeah, I'll need to get uh, hold of Clariel. Yeah, it's oh, my books. My favourite is Grace Notes by Bernard McLaverty, and he's very, very good. Jane Eyre and Pride and Prejudice, because they're awesome and classics. Favourite fantasy would be Dave Gemmell, because I honestly think his first book, Legend, should be made into a movie because it's epic. <laughs> There's just such awesome battle scenes. It's a siege, basically. It's a whole siege. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. Next, we have Squid. Hello. Well, when I stole my one, so I'm going to probably <laughs> say my... Uh, no, that's fine, because it's Douglas Asim as well, so I'll probably say 
either Dark Gently's Holistic Detective Agency or the second one in that series, A Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul. Same type of humour, different universe. Yeah, they're good. The second well, one is even yeah. better than the first. Yeah, I think it is actually, definitely. Fantasy wise, I really like the first Law trilogy. I don't know if anyone's read any of that stuff. It's uh, Joe Abercrombie. I love his stuff as well. He's got five or six novels in the same world. And they're really good. Quite contemporary stuff, though. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I will keep an eye out for it. Next, we have Rebecca. Hi. I'm trying to pick any favourite books of mine is really, really difficult. As for kids series, I would have to say the Wings of Fire series is really good. There's some absolutely amazing LGBT representations and genuine philosophy going on there. In a book about dragon tribes duking it out in world war with magical powers, what's not to like? And gays. Favourite book of all, I would have to say The Idiot Gods by David Zindel. It's about Killer Well who wants to talk to humans, ask, ask us why we're destroying the world, initiate pain. In every regard, favourite webcomic would have to be Dark White, second Dark Fantasy, Zombie Apocalypse, style Parlour Nonsense, His Dark Materials Trilogy, really good, Book of Dust that came afterwards, really good. I've uh, not read that yet, going? want to read. Mm, it's good, would recommend. <laughs> yeah, loads, I bought a book yesterday, I need to finish it. Okay, and finally, AJ. This is a real hard question, even though I'm the one who accidentally came up with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, what have I been reading recently? I've been kind of reading my way through the Foundation series and the Robot series by Isaac Asimov. I wouldn't really say they're my favorite. Like, yeah. yeah, they're really great. I don't know if they're my favorite like books, though. That's the thing. That sounds like I'm down with them. I'm not. I just don't know if there's anything I like more. I do enjoy... The Ian M. Banks culture series. Mm-hmm. It's just solid, sure. solid stuff. I don't know. Tough to pick. Really. Actually, you know what? If I, if I had to pick one, I'll go. It's actually not part of the culture series, but it's by the same author. Against a Dark Background by Ian M. Banks. Solid sci fi story. Self contained. It's really great. Yeah. Oh, I have a really weird one for people. A dragon knows this one. It's called Satan Burger. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's a bizarro kind of fantasy story. It's really funny. Like the first six pages had me in stitches because they basically kind of amorphized that the earth is like a spoiled little child and she created man just to spite God, things like that. And they have it it has tantrums and that's why there's like tsunami somewhere because it's having a tantrum <laughs> and then it follows all these weird characters it's really funny sounds nice I mean really that's, bizarre. that reminds me of when I started trying to read House of Leaves before I ran out of time to do to read House of Leaves that's a very weird book I think yeah. you would really enjoy it what's in I think Xander tried to get Burger. me to read it at one point yeah I think Xander tried to get me to read it at one point but I just yeah, well just it. forget about that bit of it <laughs> and take Amy's recommendation. Just ignore Xander. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he was a cunt. Yeah. So. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I still maintain I'm going to try and get through House of Leaves at some point, but I haven't mm-hmm. been picked up since last time, so yeah. It's been a while. I'm not going to lie, I haven't actually decided the character of human beyond the fact that he's a bird undercover as a human. Hmm. <laughs> We're getting a little cool who doesn't, though, but here, who doesn't really yeah. understand humans because he spent all of his life living in, like, the mountains or wherever the hell it is that Arakoa live. Trees, <laughs> typically. Which is also why he can't read or write human. Also, before he can read or write in bird, but not uh, in, like, people. I have to say that All Stars episode is probably one of the best episodes I've I've heard in ages. Yeah, I can. So, oh my god, that bloody bear, my (laughs) freaking heart. (laughs) It's okay, I am bear. It's okay. No, I don't don't have any bear. No. Get over it, I bear. Look, we've had this, we've get over and over. (laughs) 
<laughs> I think him and Varla probably would get on so well. <laughs> Oh, that reminds there's me. A, there's actually a couple of episodes uh, he's done of the podcast where he plays the bear. <laughs> oh, so, God, yes. Yeah. That reminds me, I've been wanting to float this idea for you just in case. Mm. I need another, another, another character. <laughs> so, Conjurer, it went wrong, so now he's a tabby cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, he can We're talk, but he's... Salem from Sabrina. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't imagining such a sassy little fuck, but yes, I am now. <laughs> Is that what Salem was? Yes. Yeah, I thought like Salem a, was just a, a cat. No, warlock was like a body. warlock or something, right? Oh, I thought he yeah. was just a yeah. magic cat. No, he was no, a warlock was... trapped in a cat's body for trying to take over the world. Yeah, oh. he was cursed. He was like banished into the body. Yeah, he was banished into guy, the body of a cat. Some deep <laughs> lore going on. For a guy who tried to take over the world, he seemed pretty chill about it. <laughs> well, you know, he went to hanging around in a teenager's bedroom. What do you do? Oh. That took a turn there. Yep. And he had become a cat. And on that note, uh, yes. let's go for the mic checks. <laughs> yeah. Mic check, Amy. Okay, I forgot to get something, but I have a schnapple pink lemonade drink thing. So what the cunt uh, is a schnapple? It's one of those American drinks. Oh, Snapple. Snapple. Yeah. Snapple, it, it, sorry. Some people say it's terrible, but some people say it's really good. I think it's it, like a New York thing. Yeah, it's it's okay, but under the lid they have little real facts, and it says here a pearl can be dissolved by vinegar. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting fact. So, don't put your beads in vinegar, I guess. Yeah, beads? unless they're Your fake. Yeah, there you go. Like, let's say you have a pawn shop. That's pawn how you shop. test if the a real... Pawn no, shop. Pawn. <laughs> That's how you test if... I wasn't going to make that joke, but thanks for stooping to that level. I was um, wondering what type of pawn shop you meant, whether it was like, like a cash... Pawn okay. shop smell like right. vinegar, apparently. Right, right, right. So, different story, different story. There was a guy I used to live with in uni called Jake. He was very on the spectrum. Oh, and he, he was a good lad, homeless lad, but he was really on the spectrum. Um, <laughs> no, the, 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 the autism spectrum. Oh, right, he right. also had like everything else in this and I probably mentioned him before. But the first Christmas, we're like, what we're going to get him for Christmas? And I can't remember who decided it, but someone decided that they would get him, you know, like the CD news agents. And then they'd have the shelf of just, the, someone just bought him that. And oh, he was very oh, happy oh, with what? Like just a porn mag. And he was very happy with it. He said he'd never owned a porn mag before, and he, he was very made sure to tell me that he used it multiple times. <laughs> yeah, they've only hurt themselves there because most people would get those kind of magazines from the woods, not from a news agent. Yep. Yeah. Also, someone bought him a knockoff flashlight, and he was horrified by it. You don't want to like buy a knockoff one of those, right? No, you? but then the guy, <laughs> another one of bricks. my flatmates was like, I'll use it. And he went away for like 15 minutes and then he came back 